I'm going to start actually by inviting Jason Franklin to the mic. Um, Jason is here doing a sort of whirlwind tour. Um, he's an incredible international leader. Um, please come up, Jason. Uh, and I'm almost embarrassed that I'm going to say, you know, we've got like three or four minutes because I then want to invite um, one of our not-for-profit leaders and one of our donors to say a few words before we um, close up. So... Time is ticking, but um, for a global <laughs> perspective, um, please, Jason, um, please make him welcome. Well, thank you, Julie. I will try to be quick. Julie knows I could sit and talk for like five hours, so but I won't do that. Um, as Julie said, so I'm uh, in engaged in social change philanthropy across the U.S. I've been coming to Australia now annually since 2016, and some of the comments even just earlier today about what's been happening in the U.S. I think are really worth paying attention to in the Australian context. Um, the first we often say in the U.S. is the demographics are not destiny. Mm. And it has been part of the complacency of the progressive movement across racial equity, around gender equity, around LGBT equality, to see the idea of demographics somehow equally destiny. That we are the women are the majority of the population and with increasing leadership. Now we're finally seeing recognition and therefore we will continue to move forward. That the LGBT community has been achieving greater equality and therefore will continue to move forward. And instead what we see is that as more greater equality is realized, the pushback also gets stronger. And we have seen the co-optation of women and LGBT and leaders and people of color to become outspoken advocates against equality. And it further complicates the conversation where you have, you know, uh, women for traditional values is one of the groups in the U.S. where you have women calling for the repeal of gender equality laws because they undermine women's rights in their frame of what it means to be a for women's rights. And I've heard and there's been talk about some of the same funders who are funding that hateful work in the United States, funding that work here in Australia. Right, acknowledging that trans rights are women's rights and that defending the lives of trans women means defending gender equality and not allowing the use of the intersection or the wedge issue of fighting and marginalizing trans people to break apart the advocates for gender equality. That has been the playbook in the United States and that is being exported all over the world. To use the wedge of racism and to talk about immigrant women versus Australian women being justified to be treated in different ways as a wedge issue to break apart the, the coalition of those who are fighting for gender equality. So I think it's really important as the kind of next iteration is going to be the pushback, right? It has been a generation of work to get the recognition, to see the goals in the federal budget, to see the advances, and every advance engenders more pushback and to be prepared for that Otherwise, because we've seen it in the U.S. where groups got complacent. You know, the, the statement from um, the 80s of not letting it fall away, we've seen it over and over uh, in the U.S., in Europe, all around the world. Um, the question, two more things I would mention. One is around uh, make, how do we make the work stick, the question earlier. I think part of it is we forget or we're not willing to be as pragmatic when, when we're fighting for equality, of what it takes to make it stick, of putting it in the Constitution, of put it in, putting it in the bureaucracy, of putting it in the metrics that are used to evaluate government funding. The more we can embed the details of what it means to realize equality and in the infrastructure of our economy into the processes of our politics, the harder it is to take it back out. We all know how hard it is to write a new bureaucratic form. So let's write better bureaucratic forms that make it harder for the right to rewrite them. And there's really, there are tactical ways. We've been, I've been doing work in the US with a bunch of democracy advocates to talk about as we flipped certain state legislatures, how do we embed voting rights more deeply into the process of government? How do we embed protections for people of color and protections for women more deeply into the government? Embedding it deeply keeps it there longer. And it makes it one less thing you have to fight for. Um, and then the last thing I think on the philanthropic side, 
is to change the, the norms of what we're pushing for. You know, I've been uh, talking with people over the last two weeks being here about how we need to set a lot of our practices not as best practices, but as good practices. Yeah. Meaning they're, the baseline is to be funding gender equity rather than the goal is to be funding gender equity. The baseline is to have gender parity rather than the goal of achieving gender parity. And it, it's a linguistic importance to shift the dynamic. When you say this is where we everyone should be starting, those who aren't there go, oh, we have to catch up to where everyone's starting versus <laughs> celebrating that you finally put one woman on your board. Like, well, when you get to five, then we will celebrate you out of eight. But you have three more slots before you get to be celebrated. You know, the shifting the bar of what we expect changes the dynamic of what people see as success. And so we don't say, oh, we've got university chancellors now as women, therefore we're done. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to be a professor and I remember my first day at the university that I joined and I asked about diversity in our faculty and the white straight male chair said, oh, we're doing great. We've got you and Michaela so one queer man and one woman of color, and therefore they were doing that. Um, but that was, and people nodded when he said that. Right? We have to change what it means to be doing great, so that way when we get to something that is just doing okay, we can say we still got more to go.